Hi everybody and welcome to Intro to Defensive Security. Offensive security focuses on one thing, breaking into systems. Breaking into systems might be achieved through exploiting bugs, abusing insecure setups, and taking advantage of unenforced access control policies, among other things. Red teams and penetration testers specialize in offensive security. Defensive security is somewhat the opposite of offensive security, as it is concerned with two main tasks. First, preventing intrusions from occurring. Second, detecting intrusions when they occur and responding properly. Blue teams are part of the defensive security landscape. Some of the tasks that are related to defensive security include user cybersecurity awareness. Training users about cybersecurity helps protect against various attacks that target their systems. Documenting and managing assets. We need to know the types of system and devices now, systems and devices that we have to manage and pro uh, protect properly. Updating and patching systems. Ensuring that computers, servers, and network devices are correctly updated and patched against any known vulnerability or weakness. Setting up preventative security devices. Firewall and Intrusion Prevention Systems, IPS, are critical components of preventative security. Firewalls control what network traffic can go inside and what can leave the system or network. IPS blocks any network traffic that matches uh, present rules and attack signatures. Setting up logging and monitoring devices. Without proper logging and monitoring of the network, it won't be possible to detect malicious activities and intrusions. If a new unauthorized device appears on our network, we should be able to know. There is much more to defensive security, and the list above only covers a few common topics. In this room, we cover Security Operations Center, SOC, Threat Intelligence, Digital Forensic and Incident, uh, Re Incident Response, DFIR, and Malware Analysis. Which team focuses on defensive, defensive security? That will be Blue Team. There you go. Okay. Let's go to the next, next uh, task. Let's see. Areas of defensive security. In this task, we will cover two main topics related to defensive security. Security Operations Center, SOC, where we cover threat intelligence. Digital forensic, uh, Forensics and Incident Response, DFIR, where we also cover malware analysis. Security Operations Center. A security operations center is a team of cybersecurity professionals that monitors the network and its systems to detect malicious cybersecurity events. Some of the main areas of interest for a SOC are vulnerabilities. Whenever, whenever a system, um, whenever a system vulnerability weakness is discovered, it is essential to fix it by installing a proper update or patch. When a fix is not available, the necessary measure, measure should be taken to prevent an attacker from exploiting it. Although remediating vulnerabilities is of vital interest to a SOC, it is not necessarily assigned to them. Policy violations. We can think of security policy as a set of rules required for the protection of the network and systems. For example, it might be a policy violation if users start uploading confidential company data to an online storage service. Unauthorized activity. Consider the case where the uh, where a user's login name and passwords, uh, password are stolen and the attacker uses them to log into the network. A SOC needs to detect such an event and block it as soon as possible before further damage is done. Network intrusions. No matter how good your security is, there is always a chance for an intrusion. An intrusion can occur when a user clicks on a malicious link or when an attacker uh, exploits a public server. Either way, when an intrusion occurs, we must detect it as soon as possible to prevent further damage. Security operations cover uh, various tasks to ensure protection. One such task is threat intelligence. Threat Intelligence In this context, intelligence refers to information you gather about actual and potential enemies. A threat is any action that can, be, uh, that can disrupt or uh, adversely affect a system. Threat Intelligence aims to gather information to help the company better prepare against potential adversaries. The purpose will be to achieve a threat-informed 
defense. Different companies have different adversaries. Some adversaries might seek to steal customer data from a mobile operator. However, other adversaries are interested in halting the production in a petroleum refinery. Example adversaries include a nation-state cyber army working for political reasons and a ransom group. Um, I'm sorry, and a, and a ransomware group acting for financial purposes. Based on the company target, we can expect adversaries. Intelligence needs data. Data has to be collected, processed, and analyzed. Data collection is done from local sources such as uh, network logs and public sources such as forums. Processing of data aims to arrange them into a format suitable for analysis. The analysis phase seeks to find more information about the attackers and their motives. Moreover, it aims to create a list of recommendations and actionable steps. Learning about your adversaries allows you to know their tactics, techniques, and procedures. As a result of threat intelligence, we identify the threat actor, adversary, predict their activity, and consequently, we will be able to mitigate their attacks and prepare a response strategy. Digital Forensics and Incident Response, DFIR. This section is about Digital Forensics and Incident Response, DFIR, and we will cover Digital Forensics, Incident Response, and Malware Analysis. Digital Forensics Forensics is the application of science to investig investigate crimes and establish facts. With the use and spread, uh, spread of digital systems, such as computers and smartphones, a new branch of forensics was born to investi uh, investigate related crimes, computer forensics, which later evolved into digital forensics. In defensive security, the focus of digital forensics shifts to analyzing evidence of an attack and its per perpetrators and other areas such as intellectual property theft, cyber espionage, and possession of unauthorized content. Consequently, digital forensics will focus on different areas such as file system, Analyzing a digital forensic image, low-level copy, of a system storage reveals much information, such as installed programs, created files, partially overwritten files, and deleted files. System memory. If the attacker is running their malicious program in memory without saving it to disk, taking a forensic image, low-level copy, of the system memory is the best way to analyze its contents and learn about the attack. System logs. Each client and server computer maintains different log files about, about what is happening. Log files provide plenty of information about what happened on a system. Some traces, traces will be left even if the attacker, uh, the attacker tries to clear their traces. Network logs. Logs of the network packets that have traversed a network would help answer more questions about whether an attack is occurring and what it entails. Incident response. An incident uh, usually refers to a data breach or a uh, cyber attack. However, in some cases, it can be something less critical, such as misconfiguration, an intrusion attempt, or a policy violation. Examples of cyber attack include uh, an attacker making our network or system inaccessible, uh, defacing, changing the public website, and data breach, a breach stealing company data. How would you respond to a cyber attack? Incident response, um, incident response specifies the methodology that should be allowed to handle such a case. The aim is to reduce, uh, reduce damage and recover in the shortest time possible. Ideally, you would develop a plan ready for incident response. The four major phases of the incident response uh, process are preparation. This requires a team trained and ready to handle incidents. Ideally, various measures are put in place to prevent incidents from happening in the first place. Detection and analysis. The team has the necessary resources to detect any incident. Moreover, it is essential to further analyze and detect incidents, uh, incident to learn about its severity. Containment, eradication, and recovery. Once an incident is detected, it is crucial to stop it from affecting other systems, eliminate it, and recover the affected systems. For instance, when we notice that a system is infected with a computer virus, we would like to stop, contain the virus from spreading to other system, uh, systems, clean, eradicate the virus, and ensure proper system recovery. Post-incident activity. 
After successful recovery, a report is produced and the learned lesson is shared to prevent similar future incidents. Malware analysis. Malware stands for malicious software. Software refers to programs, documents, and files that you can save on a disk or send over the network. Malware includes many types, such as virus, Trojan horse, ransomware. Uh, virus is a piece, uh, a piece of code, part of a program, that attaches itself to a program. It is designed to spread from one computer to another. Moreover, moreover, it works by altering, overriding, and deleting files once it infects a computer. The result ranges from the computer becoming slow to unusable. Trojan Horse is a program that shows one desirable function but hides a malicious functions, a function underneath. For example, a victim might download a video player from a shady website that gives the attacker complete control over their system. Ransomware is a malicious program that encrypts the user's files. Encryption makes the files unreadable without knowing the encryption password. The attacker offers the user the encryption password if the user is willing to pay a ransom. Malware analysis aims to learn about such malicious programs using various means. Static analysis works by inspecting the malicious program without running it. Usually this requires solid knowledge of assembly language, processors, instruction set, that is, computers' fundamental instructions. Dynamic analysis works by running the malware in a controlled environment and monitoring its activities. It lets you observe how the malware behaves when running. Okay, let's uh, see if we can answer the questions. Now, what would you call a team of cybersecurity professionals that monitors a network and its systems for malicious events. Well, that will be SOC, right? Or Security Operations Center. So let's try that and see if uh, that is correct. So security, let's see, security. Uh, let me see, Operations uh, Center. Let's see, submit. Okay, this one was right. What does DFIR stands for? Well, that is Digital Forensics and Incident Response. So let's see, uh, Digital digital uh, Forensics. All right, this one was right too. And which kind of malware requires the user to pay money to regain access to their files? And that would be ransomware, right? So let's type ransomware, ransomware, uh, and submit. All right, on to the, to the last uh, task. Let's see, practical example of defensive security. What would be a typical task that you would be doing as a security analyst? Click on view site to follow along. Okay, view site. You are part of a security operations center, SOC, responsible for protecting a bank. This bank's uh, SOC uses a security information and event management system, or SIEM. A SIEM gathers security-related information and events from various sources and presents them via one system. For instance, you will be notified if there is a failed login attempt or a login attempt from an unexpected geographic location. Moreover, with the advent of machine learning, a SIEM uh, might detect unusual behavior, such as uh, user login at 3 a.m. when he usually logs in only during work hours. In this exercise, we will interact with a SIEM to monitor the different events on our network and systems in real time. Some of the events are typical and harmless. Others might require further intervention from us. Find the event flagged in red, take note of it, and click on it for further inspection. 
Next, we want to learn more about the suspicious activity or event. The suspicious event might have been triggered by an event such as a local user, a local computer, or a remote IP address. To send and receive postal mail, you need a physical address. Similarly, you need an IP address to send and receive data over the internet. An IP address is a logical address that allows you to, to communicate over the internet. We inspect the cause of the trigger to confirm whether the event, uh, event is indeed malicious. If it is malicious, we need to take due action, such as reporting to someone else in the SOC and blocking the IP address. Okay, so what is the flag that you obtain by following along? Okay, let's follow along and find out. Okay, so inspect the alerts in your SIEM dashboard. Find the malicious IP address from the alerts, make a note of it, and then click on the alert to proceed. Okay, fine. Okay, I found it right away. So uh, this one, right? So let's, uh, yeah, we can um, uh, take note of the IP address. So 143, 110, 250, 149. Fine. Uh, let's let's click on it. There are websites on the internet that allow you to check the reputation of an IP address to see whether it's malicious or suspicious. So let's type in the IP address. So 143, and it was 110, and then it was 250. And it was 149, right? And then we press submit. Okay, so the IP address is malicious. Let's continue reading up here. Uh, now, there are many open source databases out there like uh, Abuse IPDB and Cisco Talos Intelligence where you can perform a reputation and location check for the IP address. Most uh, security analysts use these tools to aid, the, aid them with uh, alert investigations. You can also make the internet safer by reporting the malicious IPs, for example, on abuse IPDB. Now that we know the IP address is malicious, we need to escalate it to a staff member. Okay, so next. We shouldn't worry too much if it was a failed authentication attempt, but you probably noticed the successful authentication attempt from the malicious IP address. Let's declare a small incident event and escalate it. There is some great staff working at the company, but you wouldn't want to escalate this to the wrong person who is not in charge, charge of your team or department. Choose to whom you would escalate this event, and that will be Will Griffin right the soc team lead right so let's uh, press on choose staff member and there you go you got the permission to block the malicious ip address and now you can proceed and implement the block rule block the malicious ip address on the firewall and find out what message they left you perfect so okay so we can go down here and again we can type one four three one one zero 250 and 149 and block IP address and there you go our flag so we take this and we copy it and we paste it and voila we are done with this room perfect Okay, so uh, this is it. If you enjoyed the video, you got something out of it, some value, hey, give me a like. I would really, really appreciate it. Share the video and of course, subscribe to the channel for more videos on Try Hack Me. See you next time.